Preface of Tales of Old Japan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Awaii in May 2011. Tales of Old Japan by Lord Reedsdale, GCVO, KCB formerly second secretary to the british legation in japan preface in the introduction to the story of the forty-seven ronins i have said almost as much as is needful by way of preface to my stories those of my readers who are most capable of pointing out the many shortcomings and faults of my work will also be the most indulgent towards me for any one who has been in Japan and studied Japanese knows the great difficulties by which the learner is beset. For the illustrations, at least, I feel that I need make no apology. Drawn in the first instance by one Odake, an artist in my employ, they were cut on wood by a famous wood engraver at Yedo, and are therefore genuine specimens of Japanese art. Messrs. Dalziel, on examining the wood blocks, pointed out to me, as an interesting fact, that the lines are cut with the grain of wood, after the manner of Albrecht Dürer and some of the old German masters, a process which has been abandoned by modern European wood engravers. It will be noticed that very little allusion is made in these tales to the emperor and his court. Although I searched diligently, I was able to find no story in which they played a conspicuous part. Another class to which no allusion is made is that of the Goshi. The Goshi are kind of yeomen or bonnet lairds, as they would be called over the border, living on their own land and owing no allegiance to any feudal lord. Their rank is inferior to that of the samurai, or men of the military class, between whom and the peasantry they hold a middle place. Like the samurai, they wear two swords, and are in many cases prosperous and wealthy men, claiming a descent more ancient than that of many of the feudal princes. A large number of them are enrolled among the emperor's bodyguard, and these have played a conspicuous part in the recent political changes in Japan as the most conservative and anti-foreign element in the nation. With these exception, I think that all the classes are fairly represented in my stories. The feudal system has passed away like dissolving before the eyes of those who have lived in Japan during the last few years. But when they arrived there, it was in full force, and there is not an incident narrated in the following pages, however strange it must appear to Europeans, for the possibility and probability of which those most competent to judge will not vouch. Nor, as many a recent event can prove, have heroism, chivalry, and devotion gone out of the land altogether. We may deplore and inveigh against the Yamato Damashi, or Spirit of Old Japan, which still breathes in the soul of the samurai, but we cannot withhold our admiration from the self-sacrifices which men still make for the love of their country. The first two of the tales have already appeared in the fortnightly review, and two of the sermons with a portion of the appendix on the subject of Harakiri in the pages of the Cornhill magazine. I have to thank the editors of those periodicals for permission to reprint them here. London, January 7, 1871 End of Preface